You are watching the Jesscom Lenten Companion 2024. Let Jazzcom be your companions in this journey of remembering the hallowed days of our Lord this season of Lent. Starting Palm Sunday. Holy Monday. Holy Tuesday. Holy Wednesday. Maundy Thursday Good Friday Black Saturday and Easter Sunday Watch them streamed via the Facebook pages of Jesuit Communications Radio Katipunan 87.9 FM and the Jazzcom TV YouTube channel.
Are you free? Are we really free? Good evening, dear friends. Admittedly, for many of us, that question is just a political question. We talk of freedom from political bondage or oppression. And yet, freedom is also a very important spiritual matter. Saint Ignatius, the patron saint and founder of Jesuits, for instance, would talk about interior freedom, spiritual indifference, detachment. And now, for his Lenten message this year, Pope Francis shows the theme of freedom and asserts that, in fact, in the history of our salvation, God first introduced himself as the God of freedom. Yahweh tells Moses, I have seen the suffering of my people. I want them freed from Egypt. Are we really free? Friends, we are so fortunate today to be able to reflect on this theme for our Holy Week mini recollection. Our speaker is no stranger to us, of course. He is the enigmatic host of Jesuit Communications' long-running Sunday show, The Word Exposed. Despite now being based in Rome as pro-prefect at the Vatican Dicastery for Evangelization. We thank him for sharing with us his wisdom and his valuable time. Without further ado, please welcome our dear friend, Luis Antonio Gokim, Cardinal Tagle. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to the Lenten recollection of the Word Exposed for this year. And uh, we thank once again uh, the Jesuit uh, Communications Foundation for giving all of us this opportunity to uh, prepare for the Easter Triduum. For this year's uh, recollection, allow me to uh, use some of the insights of Pope Francis contained in his Lenten message for 2024. His message is entitled, Through the Desert, God Leads Us to Freedom. In this recollection, I will not repeat what Pope Francis said. What I will tell you is, please read his message. So what I will do is to get some key ideas from his message and explore through our meditation on the Word of God the question of freedom in relationship to hope. Freedom and hope. We know that these two are intimately connected. But these two precious, precious gifts, freedom and hope, are very much threatened in our contemporary world. So let us reflect on how Jesus, especially Jesus, how Jesus shows us true freedom and how Jesus gives us hope precisely through freedom. Sapagkat, Tanging ang tunay na malaya, ang may kakayahan umasa. Only those who are truly free can hope. When there is a deficit in freedom, there will always be a deficit in hope. Where despair reigns, chances are there is lack of true freedom. Let me start with the biblical text that Pope Francis used in his message, which is the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 2. And I quote, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. God addresses his people. And how does he describe himself? 
he describes himself as the God who brought his people out of slavery into freedom. And if we go a little earlier than that, the conversation between God and Moses, no? God describes himself as the God who saw the misery of his people, who heard their cries, who knew their sufferings, and then who was acting to deliver them. So a God who was very personally involved in the unfreedoms, in the lack of freedom of his people. We do not have a God who is blind to our slaveries. We don't have a God who is deaf to the cries of slaves. We don't have a God who is not in communion with the sufferings of those who are caught in unfreedoms. We have a God who sees, who hears, who knows, and then who acts. He will lead his people to freedom out of slavery. And that was what he did through Moses, especially through Moses. We know the story. No. Through the interventions of God, no, uh, through Moses and Aaron, the heart of Pharaoh got more hardened, got more obstinate. Lalo nang pakiusapan ang paraon para makaalis ang bayang Israel sa kanilang pagkakasadlak lalo naman tumitigas ang puso ng paraon. The heart of Pharaoh is a heart that refuses to grant freedom to others. So we can even say that the heart of the Pharaoh was an unfree heart also. No? He cannot give freedom because his heart was not free. And when there is a talk of freedom, his heart closes itself no? to, to such talk. No? The unfree makes others unfree. But then God's intervention was powerful through the plagues. And when the firstborn sons of both humans and animals got destroyed, then Pharaoh and his uh, companions allowed Israel to go, to go. Now, remember the story. They were uh, already traveling, no? And then Pharaoh changed his mind. Pinalaya na, pero bigla niyang naisip, teka, no, nawalan tayo ng mga alipin. No? Ay, hindi dapat mangyari yan. Habuli natin. No? So look at what happens. An unfree heart no, does not rejoice in the freedom of others and then realizes that, wait, we need slaves. A slave needs other slaves. So they ran after them. Now look at the reaction of the people uh, that were just freed, seeing the forces of Pharaoh running after them, no, they got scared, and that's normal. Who would not get scared, no? When you see all the the, the soldiers running after you, and then in front of you is a body of water, no? Look at the cry of the people. In uh, Exodus 14, verses 11 to 12, no? seeing the possible danger and being recaptured by the forces of Pharaoh, what did they tell uh, uh, Moses? 
sabi, sabi na namin sa iyo eh. We are already told you, leave us alone. Far better for us to be slaves of the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Wow. Huh? The exuberance and thanksgiving turned into blaming. Huh? Blaming Moses. But ba pumasok-pasok ka pa sa buhay namin? And then, they started longing for a life of slavery. Sana nanatili na lang kaming alipin sa Egyptyo. And God once again intervened through the prayer of Moses. And we know the miracle, the parting of the sea. And they were able to cross. No? So they were saved. But look at that. No? When danger comes, parang mas mabuti pang bumalik sa pagkaalipin. Then they will reach the desert. They reach the desert. When they reach the place called the uh, uh, Mara, the water was bitter. They complained again. They complained. And uh, they longed for the sweet water of Egypt. Sana hindi na kami umalis sa Egyptyo. Which means, we would have preferred to, uh, to be slaves. No? We prefer to have remained slaves rather than taste this bitter type of water. But God was very good. No? Through Moses, again, they were granted sweet water in the desert. Then their journey continued. They ran out of food. Hunger set in. No? E alam naman po natin, kapag nagutom ang tao, ay talaga namang mag-aalma. No? And the Egyptians, in, uh, uh, the Israelites, in Exodus 16, no? verses 1 to 4, in the desert of Sin, No? When they were already experiencing hunger, what did they say? Would that we had died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. Sana, doon na lang kami namatay sa Egypt, no? sa gitna ng aming mga pagkain. Hindi ba alin na kung kami alipin? May pagkain naman. Mamatay kang busog. <laughs> That's what we always hear. No? Rather than die here in the desert of hunger, you call this freedom? There's no food. No? I, better be, I better return to slavery. At least as a slave, I had food. But God was good. <laughs> the God of freedom. And they, uh, God gave them manna and quail. Why? Why are we recounting this? No? Uh, we see here, uh, I think we can also see ourselves here in this drama. God frees the people from slavery. But when, when something unpleasant happens, you know, when like uh, a danger, an imminent danger though is seen when the water the taste of water is bitter or life is bitter when there is hunger or lack of uh, the the good things that we're expecting the tendency was to look back and to compare my present condition and the condition the past condition of slavery and In the experience of the Israelites, the newfound freedom for them is worse than the state of slavery. Just because there are difficult moments in this desert of freedom. No? Kaya parang may kagustuhan na sana hindi na lang kami umalis sa pagkaalipin. And so, reaching the promised land, the hoped for the promised land, 
becomes weak. There is a deficit of hope. Nagkulang na ang, ang pag-asa samantalang kinasasabikan ang pagkaalipin. The nostalgia for slavery you know, diminishes hope for the future. Nostalgia for a past of slavery diminishes the hope for a brighter future. This is one point that uh, we need to see. No? God's offer of freedom, but uh, when, when difficulties come, people, including us, sometimes would prefer to go back to slavery. At this point, we want to ask ourselves, well, we understand the reaction of uh, the Israelites. No? Who would not want water, clean water? Who would not want food? No? But then our question is, what is the freedom that they were uh, waiting for or expecting to happen? Was it the freedom to, uh, oh, a good life, no more problems, no more threats? Were they, were, was their idea of freedom as a, oh, overflowing water or other drinks? <laughs> <laughs> na walang uh, walang katapusan uh, or uh, uh, a life that is an endless banquet yung ba ang iniisip nilang kalayaan buhay na laging planchado lahat pag may gusto ako mm, naandyan na at pag wala yan hindi yan freedom is that the type of freedom that they were expecting? probably probably and they missed one point what was the freedom that Moses and Aaron were asking Pharaoh to give to the Israelites? And I admit, very often, we who reflect on the liberation of Israel from slavery, we seldom, seldom describe the freedom that Moses and Aaron asked for the people. And what is it? In Exodus chapter 7, verse 16, Moses told Pharaoh, God is the one speaking here, let my people go to worship me in the desert. In Exodus 7, verse 26, exactly the same. Let my people go to worship me. Aha. The freedom that God wants to offer to the people is the freedom to worship God. To worship the true God. It was not a freedom to just enjoy a problem-free life. It is not the freedom of... Uh, uh, getting what I want, no matter how essential they are. It was the freedom to worship God. Dear friends, how many of us think of freedom as worship of God? The worship of the true God. That's what freedom is all about. That's what, the, that's what God is leading us to that type of freedom. And if we look at the reverse, then slavery is worshipping false gods, idols, or not worshipping at all, not worshipping God, and maybe uh, shifting. If I have the capacity to worship, I worship false gods. Worshipping false gods is lack of freedom. It is slavery. Slavery is to lead us to that space where we could render to God fitting worship. 
it may sound easy. Parang napakadali, no? Eh, sasamba lang naman pala sa Diyos, eh. Kalayaan, sumasamba ako sa Diyos. Aha. No, God led the people Israel to the desert first. Because in the desert, in the desert, the false gods that people, that we all worship without our knowing, no? That we worship, they surface. The desert experience, the desert experience of dryness, of hunger, of even being exposed to threats, these are important for us to see when life is not easy, are we still capable of rendering to God, the true God, the worship that is due to God? Or do we long for the false gods? The false gods. Now, freedom is the worship of the true God. In the deserts of life, the other gods that we worship are exposed. Kaya minsan po, mahalaga rin yung desert experience. Not that we will look for it. Not that we will look for problems. Not that we will look for difficulties. But they come. When they come, the dryness, the trials, when our minds uh, are lost in uh, the search for solutions and answers, stay calm. Those are moments where our hearts are probably looking for the gods that we are used to, the gods that we are used to, to, to clinging on to, the gods that we, no, we, we probably will not use the term, the gods that we used to worship because they are the gods that give us comfort. So the desert experience will purify us so that we will cling to the true God and put our faith in the true God. Minsan po, doon na nadadalisay, doon nalilinis ang ating kalayaan na kilalanin ang tunay na Diyos kapag tayo ay walang-wala nang makapitang iba. And when we realize that the other gods that we have been clinging on to are helpless, then we turn to the true God in the desert of life and slowly, slowly recognize God and offer God true worship. The freedom of worship of the true God is contained in the covenant relationship or what we call the Ten Commandments. No? You, you should not worship other gods. You should hallow the name of God. You should keep the, the, uh, the, the Sabbath day holy. And then, if you worship the true God, you will not kill. You will not steal. You will not f- be uh, 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 a, a promoter of falsehood. You will not be greedy. You will not destroy other people. You see? But if you worship a false God, you will kill. You will steal. You will destroy other people. And you are a slave again. The worship of the true God makes a people a people of justice, a people of peace, a people of respect. So it's a question of the freedom that leads to true worship of the true God. So, let us be attentive to the signals of unfreedoms in us. Especially when uh, we enter into the deserts of life. We learn from the Israelites. How did their unfreedoms surface? Through their complaints. (laughs) Complaints, no? Complaining against Moses, complaining about the water, complaining about the, the manna, ano, kakasawa naman itong, itong uh, pugo, ano ba ito, ano, ganyan. Complaints, complaints, complaints. Let us evaluate 
What are your favorite complaints? Ano yung mga lagi mong nire-reklamo? Now, some complaints might be legitimate. Huh? I'm not saying we should not complain. There are complaints that are legitimate. And some of the complaints are even prophetic. But some might reveal that we are worshiping false gods. That we are worshiping our belly. <laughs> that we are worshiping money. That we are worshiping, you know, all these false promises. And when they do not happen, we complain. And we do not see the blessings of God, the true blessings of the true God. So instead of worshiping through thanksgiving and gratitude, the true God, we complain. And later on, we will desire to be slaves again. And the moment people lose this freedom to worship God, and they start complaining, seeing only the, the bad things in their lives, that is already hopelessness. So you see the connection between true freedom, freedom to worship God, and what we call hope. The good news, though, is, as we see in the history of Israel, God does not give up. Of course, God also, no, in, in, in his conversations with, with Moses, God will say, hey, look at that people, no? Pinalaya na nga natin, no? Um, madaling makalimot, no? They, the memory of, of the people, of the good things, the great things that God has done for them uh, to free them out of, from, from slavery is very short. They forget the great things that God has done the moment they see something to complain about, no? Uh, but the good news is God does not give up. As we saw earlier, God parted the waters so they could cross. God gave them the uh, sweet water. God gave them manna from the heavens and quail. But they did not see that it was God who was giving it. Their eyes were focused only on their safety, on the water, and on the, 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 the bread that they did not know of. Manna, manhu, what is this? No? Uh, so again, the distraction. But God is a good God. God will continue responding to His people. God knows the unfreedoms of the people. And God's will to liberate us from, that, from those unfreedoms will never waver. But let us not forget that the freedom that God offers is the freedom to worship Him, to give our allegiance to the true God. Apart from that, we are not free. We are slaves by the false gods that we are serving. Only the truly free in worshiping the true God will have hope. So in this first part of our reflection, I am inviting you to please review. Now, what is your understanding of freedom? Is our understanding of freedom connected to worship of the true God? Or is freedom just doing what I want and getting what I expect? What are your favorite complaints? Are they legitimate? Or do they reveal something deeper about us? Are our complaints indicative of the false gods that we want 
to be always present in our lives. Those false gods that promise false joys, which are temporary. And when they disappear, then we complain again. There is no inner freedom. So, dear brothers and sisters, in the deserts of our lives, God forms our hearts, forming our hearts to be worshipers in truth and in spirit. And only true worshipers will continue the journey towards a future, what we call hope. Let us meditate.
at siyang itatapat sa puso. friends, mga kaibigan sa pananampalataya. So welcome back to our uh, Lenten recollection for this year. Uh, this is the second part of our reflection. I am just sharing with you my own reflections, but uh, I hope you would uh, pursue whatever theme uh, touches you, whatever topic or word touches you. The theme we have chosen for this year is freedom to hope. The experience of Israel, former slaves in Egypt, was that of a God who led them to freedom. But in the desert, as we saw in the book of Exodus, they encountered threats, thirst, hunger, which made them long for Egypt. They even considered their state as slaves in Egypt better than the roaming in the desert towards the promised land. But what freedom does God offer to us? Is it the, uh, the freedom to have a problem-free life, to, to have life as we desire it, uh, to have plenty all the time. And we saw that in the conversation between Moses and Pharaoh, the freedom God was asking of Pharaoh was for their, his people to go to the desert to worship him. The freedom to worship God and the freedom that is expressed in the worship of the true God and the worship of the true God that gives freedom. Okay. And I also invited all of us to review our complaints the way the Israelites complained. Maybe our complaints, some are legitimate, as I said, some may be expressions of the false gods that we are worshiping, uh, the false gods that we want to satisfy us. And we saw that the moment the freedom to worship God, the true God, is lost, then hope for the future is gone. They even went, wanted to go back to an old state of life of slavery. So, I think this is a crucial point. Freedom is connected to the God that we worship. And the, our capacity to freely worship the true God is connected to hope. For this second portion, let us turn to Jesus. Let us turn to Jesus, whose uh, embrace out of love, whose embrace of the cross, out of love for the Father and love for us, will always be a, 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 an anchor you know, in our search for freedom to hope. Jesus had a desert experience too. Remember, after his baptism in the Jordan, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, led him to the wilderness, to the desert, where he stayed for 40 days in fasting and prayer. Just like the 40 years in the desert of Israel. As we said earlier, in the desert experience of Israel, they were purified of their unfreedoms, of their slavery 
Not anymore the slavery caused by Pharaoh, not anymore the, the slavery caused in Egypt, but the slavery of their desires, you know, impeding them from worshiping God, from following His commandments. You know, they even uh, crafted a new God, you know, the molten calf. You know? now, so that happened in the desert, the purification of their freedom to choose God. Jesus had a similar experience. And one of the temptations of Jesus happened this way. According to the version of the temptations in St. Luke chapter 4, 5 to 8, Jesus was tempted by the devil. Ano po yung tukso na ibinigay kay Jesus habang siya ay nasa sarili niyang disyerto? All the power and glory of the kingdoms of this world were being given to Jesus. Power and glory of the kingdoms of this world no? will be given to Jesus. Now, what did the devil expect of Jesus in return? No? Well, the devil said, okay, we'll give you all of these, but you must worship me. Aha. We are back to that crucial point. Worship, the, the act of worship. And here, the devil is tempting Jesus. Stop worshiping the God that you call your father. No? And if we can extend <laughs> the dialogue, no? parang this was, siguro ito yung nangyayari sa isip ng demonyo. Look, your father, the one that you worship, will promise you the cross. Will promise you uh, death on the cross. You will be humiliated. You will be spat upon. You will be ridiculed. Your disciples will leave you. That's what your father, the, the one that you call your God, that's what he is offering you. Uh, why worship him? Ako mas maganda ako ang aking offer sa iyo. No? Lahat ng kapangyarihan, lahat ng paghahari at kaluwalhatian ng, ng mundong ito mapapa sa iyo. So, I deserve the worship no? that you can give because I'm the one who is offering this to you. But Jesus, Jesus rebutted him and said, you shall do homage to the Lord your God. Him alone shall you adore. Jesus was telling the devil, you are not the true God. Only the true God deserves homage, adoration, and worship. And by saying that and rejecting the worship of the devil, Jesus also rejected the powers and the glory of this kingdom, the kingdoms of this world, as the path that he would take as the Messiah. It's a question of worship. And Jesus showed us the freedom, the freedom to worship the true God. A consumerist, a practical, pragmatic mind will say, Kawawa naman si Jesus. Ayan, kasasamba mo sa tunay na Diyos na tinatawag mong tunay na Diyos. Ayan, napako ka tuloy sa krus. Well, Jesus will probably tell us, but that's what, uh, that's the reason why, why I came. And the cross is not just suffering. It is my love my love for the Father. 
and my love for all of you. On the cross of love, Jesus offered to the Father the worship of obedience, the worship of total availability. And this Jesus did in faith. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. That's a act, an act of worship. And trusting everything that he was in the hands of the Father, in total obedience, not counting the cost, no? not telling the Father, oh, ito muna ho, ha? Uh, ito yung mga kondisyon. Kapag masaya na ako sa kondisyon, then, I, aking ia, I, iaalay ang buhay ko para sa iyo. Hindi eh. Hindi po ganun ang pagsamba ni Jesus sa Diyos. It's total obedience. And part of the total obedience to the Father is the giving of life out of compassion for brothers and sisters. The cross of Christ, His place of worship, is also the place where love of God is connected with love of neighbor. For no one is obedient to God and remain indifferent to brothers and sisters. So Jesus, Jesus shows us the consequence of his worship of the true God. He will face the cross, the glory of the cross, which is different from the glory of this world. It is the power of the cross, which is different from the power of this world. It is the power and the glory of the love rendered to the Father through obedience and the love rendered to brothers and sisters who do not merit it. But because of love, it is freely given. Jesus shows us true freedom. Sa tingin po ng iba, yung krus ni Jesus ay pagkatalo. Parang napako siya doon, hindi na siya makakilos, <laughs> adi talo siya. Pero hindi po eh. Para sa Kanya, doon niya nga naibigay sa Diyos ang karapat-dapat na pagsamba sa Diyos. Which is not 10%, 30%, 90%, but 100% giving of self to God. That's why later on, St. Paul will tell us in his letter to the Romans, Offer your bodies as a fitting sacrifice to the Lord, your spiritual worship. And the basis of St. Paul, no, in thinking of that spiritual worship, which is done through the offering of our whole lives, is Jesus. The freedom out of love to worship God. At sana po, uh, during the Easter Triduum, no po, uh, Good Friday, the silence of uh, Holy Saturday, and the glory of the resurrection. Behold Jesus. Behold His freedom to worship God in obedience and to be a loving and compassionate brother to all of us. Ito po yun. The other item that I would like to explore is how Jesus' worship, free freedom to worship God by rejecting all the false offers of the devil leads to hope. By the way, when we talk of hope, hope, uh, what is the object of hope? Uh, alam niyo po, kung minsan, dyan tayo nagkakamali. Akala natin ang pag-asa ay nakatutok sa mga bagay na gusto natin. May katotohanan yan, pero hindi yan ang buong katotohanan. Hope 
the destination of hope, the object of hope, is not objects, <laughs> things, or wishes, desires. True hope, this Christian hope, is directed in or at the person of God. We hope in God. We hope in Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ is our future. He is our future. He is the promised land after our own deserts. Our hope is in Him. We do not hope in some things. We hope in the person the way Jesus hoped in the Father. Driven by the Spirit, His hope became perfect through freedom to obey the Father. At ganyan din po sana tayo. As we contemplate the freedom of Jesus, let us look at our quality of hoping. At a... Uh, uh, I want to address, uh, especially our young people, no? uh, where do we put our hope? Where do we locate our hope? No, in, in gadgets, in having the latest model of, uh, of uh, cell phones, iPhone, <laughs> iPhones, iPads, whatever? No? Uh, nasaan ba ang ating pag-asa? Or is it in having as many followers on Facebook, or many likes, you know, uh, 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 to, uh, uh, on the things that we post? Na parang, oh, I, I've had 500 likes, no? Do sa photo na aking uh, uh, pinost, no? Gaya, wow, I have a hopeful future. I have a future full of hope kasi ang daming likes. A daming of friends. No? And then, paano kung wala ng gadget? Paano pag wala nang uh, tumingin doon sa pinopost mo? No more hope? I ask this question because uh, uh, we might be confused. No? We might be confused when it comes to hoping. We might be placing our hopes in false gods who cannot satisfy the deepest desires of our hearts. Well, false gods will promise you false things. And if you respond to those false promises, you end up in false terrains, false places that we call Despair. Despair. Kaya magandang tanungin po, lalo na ngayon sa Semana Santa, si Jesus ba ang aking pag-asa? Is Jesus my destination? Is He my future? He. We have beautiful passages in scriptures showing that Jesus is our hope and He is our future. For example, in the first letter of Peter, chapter 1, 1 to 4, we are told, Let us give thanks to God our Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of His great mercy, he gave us new life by raising Jesus Christ from death. This fills us with the living hope. And so we look forward to possessing the rich blessings that God keeps for His people. He keeps them for you in heaven, where they cannot decay or spoil or fade away. Faith is sure in Jesus who lives eternally as the risen one. 
Because in Jesus, there is no more death, no decay. So if we place our hope in Him by worshiping the true God, the Father of Jesus, by the love of the Spirit, our destination is where He is. In the letter to the Colossians, chapter 1, verse 27, St. Paul tells us, God's plan is to make known His secret to His people, this rich and glorious secret which He has for all peoples. And the secret is that Christ is in you, the hope of glory. Wow! So as we are presenting the hope as something of the future, our destination, St. Paul is saying what we hope for is already in us. Christ in us. He remains in us as the risen one. He promised, I will be with you till the end of the ages. What we hope for in the definitive kingdom of God is with us now. That's why in the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 1, we hear this immortal lines, Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Our faith in Jesus who rendered to God on the cross true worship and who showed to us the freedom to love now is risen. That is our faith conviction. And our faith is the basis of what we hope for, that there is life in Jesus. And if we join Jesus in worshiping the true God, through obedience to God and love of neighbors, then we know where we are headed. We know that we will be with Him. This is our hope. We are already God's children now in Jesus Christ. What we shall later be, we do not know. But we know in hope that we will be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. My dear brothers and sisters, this is a crucial, crucial topic this Lent and also during uh, uh, the years to come. There are many, many images of freedom being offered to us. Please, evaluate them. Analyze them with the eyes of faith and match them with the experience of Jesus. Freedom as loyalty to the true God. It is the worshiper of the true God, like Jesus, who will become a servant of God and not a servant of weapons, of violence, of corruption, of greed, of money. The true worshipers of the true God you know, will be people of justice, of truth, of love, of sharing. This is crucial. We see different forms of freedoms. And if we are not careful, we might be clinging to false freedoms the way the devil tempted Jesus with false freedoms. And some people have succumbed to that false worship. And later on, they have been enslaved, not doing anything good. And so they just eat, drink, and just satisfy their longings. But St. Paul also tells us the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating or drinking, but of justice, 
peace and the joy that is given by the Holy Spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us renew our faith in Jesus. By our faith in Him, we have hope in eternal life. The triumph of life over death, the triumph of compassion over indifference, the triumph of mercy over vengeance, the triumph of truth over lies, the triumph of communion and unity over division, the triumph of love over fear. But this happens in the heart of Jesus, the heart that was totally free to worship the true God in obedience and totally free to offer oneself for brothers and sisters, out of compassion and solidarity. I leave you with some questions that you have heard already, which I mentioned a few times during this recollection. One question is, what are the false gods that are claiming our worship today. Secondly, what are the dire and evil consequences in our personal, familial, and societal lives of the worship of false gods? Thirdly, How can we train our young people, form our young people to worship God the way Jesus did, even facing the desert of the cross, not as abandonment by God, but as a purification of love that becomes hope for the future? Let us pray that we may be off, able to offer to God, just like Jesus, the worship of a holy life, freedom to obey God, and the freedom to love brothers and sisters. for 
My dear friends, thank you for joining us in this Lenten recollection. And we thank also Jesuit Communications for making this available to a larger uh, audience. I beg you to continue the meditation, not on everything that I've said, but maybe on one point where you are called by the Lord Jesus to accompany him in this freedom to be a servant of God, the worship of God, which leads to a life of peace and justice and love for neighbors. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you kindly and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much, dear Cardinal Tagle, for sharing with us your profound, deep, and meaningful insights on freedom, and for leading us in prayer in this brief recollection. We know how busy you are, and yet you always have time for us. Maraming salamat po. I would also like to thank our production staff at Jesuit Communications and Radio Katipunan for the work they've done for this recollection. Thanks also to our media partners, Radio Veritas, TV Maria, and to our many live streaming partners as well. Finally, we thank all of you who watch tonight's online recollection, especially the worldwide followers of The Word Exposed. Please continue supporting Cardinal Taglet's The Word exposed. Again, maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat and may we all have a blessed Holy Triduum. <music>